Hello. Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Eve, can you hear me? I can. Happy Monday to everyone. Yeah. So good morning, folks. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to Coded Life. Uh, we are your hosts for the day. Uh, this is one more uh, series. Let me make sure. Yeah, I think we are on uh, on Twitch. Uh, audio, video looking good. So yeah, I think we can roll. So this is um, another one of our continued uh, series on pest control, which is a funny name, because uh, most Mondays we are devoting to uh, grabbing some time to talk about debugging and testing and all the good things uh, that come along. Uh, these are parts of the dev lifecycle that we I don't think we talk enough about. We should talk more about them. It's not just about writing software and shipping it. It's just this is a key part of how you ship things. All right, so uh, chat room is filling up here. Hey, uh, Raptor, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, the tiger is here. Hello, hello. <laughs> good morning. You know, um, before we start, I, I um, have to acknowledge. So, um, so I'm your host, Sam Basu. With me, I have the wonderful Eve. Eve, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Sam gracefully asked me to join him. My name is Eve Terzillo. I'm on the dev developer relations team along with Sam, and I handle all things related to Fiddler which would be key because we are talking Fiddler <laughs> today. Uh, so uh, Eve is in, you're just a little north of Pittsburgh, right? Correct. You can see yeah. it's a little gloomy behind me. <laughs> very good. I, I tried all the right lighting. It's just not working out. <laughs> well, it is very gloomy where I'm at as well, but I have like really bright lights in front of me. So uh, this is not my kitchen. As you can tell, my kitchen is a complete disaster. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we are both uh, kind of in northern parts of the United States. And um, if you are stateside, uh, yesterday evening was not, not fun if you're on the Gulf Coast. So I don't know if, if you saw any of that, the Hurricane Ida, Ida if you're calling it right, uh, that was bad um, for a lot of Gulf Coast. Um, so, and I, I love New Orleans. It's such a vibrant city with so much life. So uh, our, our thoughts go out to people, lots of people without yes. power lots of damage so hopefully it's not as bad as we thought it would be so we shall see but uh, you know uh, lots of uh, negative things going on in the world so what we can do is just kind of cleanse our minds do the best we can be the best humans we can uh, so let's let's focus on uh, what we want to talk about today and that's Fiddler right so uh, I brought on Eve because she is the resident expert I am more on the dev side but again I, I tinker and I fail a lot so Eve is really here to teach me all the things that I need to know uh, about Fiddler about debugging so why don't we get started uh, so let's see if I can move this window over and share my desktop if I can Let's see, share screen, desktop. There you go. That is not my car, Eve. I mean, a clean kitchen and this fancy <laughs> car. Like, <laughs> you're doing it right, uh, Sam. I don't know. All right. Let's see. A new window. There you go. Okay. So uh, before we start, uh, let's see. You've yeah, desktop showing fine. Um, so this is uh, this is the series that I was talking about, right? So every Monday we're taking the time. And in fact, August was a little light because uh, again we are all living through a pandemic uh, and uh, streaming as often as we do takes a toll. So we, as a collectively as a team, we we thought we would take August a little easy, but we are all refreshed and coming back uh, to you uh, with a bang in September. Uh, but this is uh, the series that we are doing. And in fact, um, Eve has had already started this. I think it was two weeks back, Eve. Yes. Uh, so this is pest control. And all of the sessions that are done, they're actually right down here. Uh, so you can go watch them. They're all on YouTube. So this is Eve talking about inspecting traffic when that's not enough. Uh, we also did a session with uh, Test Studio, how you can um, kind of bug proof your applications, especially with Blazor. So check those out. Everything that is done will, uh, will be right down here recorded. So this is today. Uh, no, not that. This is today, right? Uh, Monday, August 30th, Fiddler 101 with me and Eve. Uh, next week, uh, it's it's a day off uh, both for us here in the U.S. and parts of uh, the, uh, the EU as well. So we're taking a break. And then uh, following up next Monday, uh, we are going to bring on Robert uh, Bodeheimer, who is a good friend of ours, an absolute Fiddler rock star. Uh, so he's going to teach more uh, about Fiddler and some advanced techniques to me. So I'm, I'm really in learning mode from Eve and, and Robert here. So 
that's what we are doing. So, Eve, um, where do we even start with Fiddler? So much has evolved, right? So much. Yeah. A good place to get started is Fiddler has really evolved from where a lot of people may remember it from. You know, yeah. Fiddler is a tool that is tried and true, has been around for quite a while, uh, but it, it has been rewritten. We do have, you know, distinctive products. I think that's one of the things that I like to point out, you know, is we do have Fiddler Classic, which is our original, you know, we call it the uh, original debugger for Windows only. But then we do realize that the landscape has changed. So that's where we came out with Fiddler Everywhere that builds upon the Windows, but also offers support for, you know, Mac OS and Linux. Uh, and then this is the product that has continued to see a lot of the investment put into it the collaboration features. And so we're really trying to make that distinction between the two products. You know, each of them serve a particular need. And depending mm -hmm. on your needs, you can choose, you know, the one that's right for you. Yeah. Um, so, so that's usually that, a good spot. It's just making that distinction between right. the two fiddlers. So if I'm here on, on the Fiddler website, and this is where we want to get started, uh, I thought we had a section where like it talked about the different types of Fiddler, or maybe I'm... I'm... So we do. If you go back to, we have what we call a hub page. So if you go to the yeah, main menu... Yeah, where is the hub page? Um, okay, go to that that's... drop down and then Fiddler... Oh, ah, there you go. Yep. That's the hub page. Yeah. So we're kind of so this, this renaming it the Fiddler at. family. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So instead of one, now we have like five. Fiddler Jam is kind of a relatively new um, uh, product in here. But uh, if you have forever like used Fiddler, which like a lot of developers, like we have a history of using Fiddler over the years, this is kind of where we started. Like what uh, you said, this is Fiddler on Windows and uh, no one's moving a cheese. It is still the same Fiddler okay. with all the things that you uh, like uh, about it. So everything is there. Uh, but like Eve said, like we live in a cross platform uh, kind of world where we can bring our OS, uh, our beloved OS to, to the game. So this is Fiddler everywhere. And, and this one, uh, Eve, correct me if I'm wrong, this is written from the ground up, like from scratch, right? Correct. That was just a few yeah. years ago. Um, yeah. And then we just had the major release, I think maybe six weeks ago with some new features. And there's a great roadmap that's coming out. So I think you're going to see a lot of things um, that maybe you've been waiting for or you've been kind yeah. of sitting back and waiting to see how Fiddler Everywhere, what direction Fiddler Everywhere is going to go. Right. And I'm confident you'll be impressed. Nice. Nice. So uh, I, I I run, uh, so I go both ways, which is a term that I've learned. I, I should not be using a whole lot. But uh, again, I go both ways with Windows and Mac. I, I have Windows as a VM where I run Fiddler Classic. And I also have Windows under my desk uh, where I run Fiddler Classic. But uh, I'm actually on Mac as my main dev machine. So maybe we'll stick to the Fiddler Everywhere uh, things. And I'll try to do some things here. And then um, uh, we'll, we'll have Eve uh, show us a few more things. Sure. So that's Fiddler Everywhere. And, and I really like the fact that it runs everywhere, right? Like it said, yes. Mac, Windows, and Linux. I, I love that. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Fiddler Core, uh, because this is the core engine that drives Fiddler, correct? Correct. And, and this is and, something and, if you need to embed it into your applications. Right. So if you're building like uh, a, a dashboard or you want to actually embed Fiddler traffic capturing and all of the functionality inside of your app, then this is the way to go for it. And then yeah. this is kind of a .NET solution. Yes. Nice. Okay. Now, Fiddler Cap, I have used Fiddler Cap. Uh, and, and this is where we get to... Um, some of your like non-technical users, maybe like who are not your developers, uh, or maybe um, you, you know even for your uh, support teams to be able to kind of quickly um, debug and unearth issues as to what may be going on. Uh, let me see, chat room. Um, uh, the tiger, you're you're having fun at, at my expense. Yes, we uh, <laughs> um, we made shirts back in the days when we were not as um, you know culturally aware. We made shirts that said "I go both ways." It's just not 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 a good phrase, uh, <laughs> but yeah, as a multi-platform user. So yes, um, now everything is welcome. Uh, bring Windows, bring Mac OS, bring Linux. You're welcome. Now Fiddler Cap, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Eve. That's a Windows only. A tiny little app that you can install, and it's just a lightweight uh, version of Fiddler. Lets you quickly start the capture and then stop the capture and then yep. share that. Correct. You got it. Exactly. Nice. 
but even that is something you need to uh, maybe have your users install. So uh, Fiddler Jam, I really like that. It's just nothing. It's just a browser extension, right? And and is, is Fiddler Jam, like I, I see the beta tag here. It's not fully out, right? It is fully out. We are in what okay. we're calling a paid beta state. Uh, so it is stable software. And what's really cool about this product is it has two components to it. So one, we do have the Chrome browser extension that you mm -hmm. provide to your end users to capture a bug that's happening on their screen. And then building off of Fiddler, um, the family, we have a really robust portal. So then mm -hmm. they can send this these screenshots, um, logs, and different things to this portal where your support team or your dev team have this centralized place to really dig into what is going on to replicate the issue and ultimately resolve the bugs fast. So uh, this is a product that has really taken off in the last six months. It has a release planned um, for, I think it's September, October, with some really cool new features coming out that are even going to elevate it more. But this is one of those things that it reduces that friction that, you know, if you've ever worked on a support team or with end users, we know you're always trying to get more context, you're missing errors, you don't have the full story. And then it's hard, you don't want to be that person to be like, well, I got part of the story, can you fix it? We know it's yeah. going to happen, right? <laughs> uh, so this solves that problem. And the people who are using it, you know, we do have paid users are reporting immense um, increases in like response time, response rate. They're getting tickets out of the queue that they weren't able to before. And that's huge. I mean, those are your yeah. KPIs when you're in that type of team. Yeah, nice. Uh, I actually do have the extension right here, which uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump through that once we start tinkering around. But I, I really like Fiddler Jam. It is so slim and it's so like on point as to what it does. And like you said, yes. like you're just letting the user capture whatever you need. And and one thing we, we got to be careful here and then something the Fiddler Jam gives you the full um, control over is like privacy, right? What exactly are you capturing? You don't want to capture super sensitive stuff and stuff that's outside of the tab that you're on. So I like that. And again, um, uh, like if you look at things from a support perspective, maybe things don't even need to go to the dev teams because you're able to kind of go through and figure out what the issue is. Yeah, you're right. It eliminates that worry. A lot of people yeah. are worried about those consequences of sharing that sensitive data and they felt like they had no control over that before, but now they do. You know, we yeah. have um, secure links. Uh, you can password protect things. We have data masking. All of those yeah. things to, you know, reduce the anxiety that comes with that. Yeah, good point. All right, so um, why don't we do this? Like, uh, and we have an hour here, uh, Eve, uh, which we're going to like easily blow past. So I don't know how long we can go, but uh, we'll, we'll try. And if we need, we'll do another session. Perfect. But, uh, how about we keep Fiddler Classic for another time? Because I know like Robert actually really likes Fiddler Classic and some of the features yeah. that he shows off. Why don't I stick to Fiddler Everywhere today and then a little bit of Fiddler Jam towards the end? That's a good plan. So how about we do this? Um, I, I look at the docs here, which actually we, we spend, I know you and the team spend a lot of time um, making sure everything is looks good because this is the starting point for so many people who are just coming into the Fiddler family. Why don't I start here? And I saw that like it has all of these things that Fiddler is known for. It's just not not just like capturing the traffic, right? It's inspecting, tinkering with yeah. the traffic, recording things, mocking things, uh, creating uh, APIs, requests, and responses. Uh, how do you collaborate uh, with your team members and and so on? And mobile traffic. And I, I come from a mobile, mobile background, so let's do all of that stuff, right? And I, maybe I want to go through all of these things and uh, try to see the basics in action. And I know you, you are way more advanced into this, so you can show me some cool stuff towards the end. Um, Good. I'm excited. OK, let's do this. So this is Fiddler Everywhere. If you are just starting out, uh, please head out to the Fiddler uh, site and get the right Fiddler. That's good for you, be it Fiddler Classic on Windows or Fiddler Everywhere. I already happen to have Fiddler uh, installed, and uh, I have a subscription. So I can get started, but keep in mind here, let's see. Uh, I actually have my Wi-Fi turned off. Um, so I'm on wired internet, which should be fine. But then I, I, I actually do want to turn my Wi-Fi back on because I want to show you something on my phone because I'm always doing like deployments on my phone. But let's start with uh, Fiddler everywhere here. And uh, keep in mind, while I do this, uh, this is uh, a network proxy, so it is low level. It is every traffic on my computer goes through Fiddler, uh, and then I can turn things on and off if I want to. 
Okay, so uh, I'm gonna um, stop the live capture because a lot of things, uh, like I, I have a few tabs <laughs> open and you know, modern websites, modern computers and, and our services, our Apple services, Google services, they are just like a Microsoft service. So they're like calling home all the time. Uh, it is actually <laughs> kind of eye-opening to see how much traffic we uh, generate out of our computers. But this is the brand new and fresh look and feel of filler everywhere. Correct, Eve? Yes. Yep. You, you have the 2.0 version. Yes. Um, uh, Johnny Bcat is saying, how about filler on the roof? Huh? <laughs> what do you mean by that? The play? <laughs> Maybe. I see. I see. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm, I'm not going into song in this um, particular <laughs> stream today. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> uh, 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 like a fiddler used to be like, uh, it's a it's, it's not a full guitar, right? It's like a tiny thing that used to be called fiddler. And then we had the, like the cat played fiddler. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are here. And uh, this is one thing I really like, Eve. And uh, uh, people... Um, have a love-hate relationship with uh, dark mode. I, I am not a dark mode person, but I like the fact that we have this option, right? So I can go light blue uh, and uh, I can go default dark, which is a little too dark for me, but I can live with like dark blue. Like this is this is something that's kind of nice and relaxing on my eye, especially like if it's like late at night. But uh, you know, like when we are showing screen, I think uh, lighter themes actually uh, show better. So I'm gonna yeah. stick to that. And it comes down to preference, you know, and people yeah. like choices. And so this was something in that latest release where we went beyond the one choice and gave you three additional and, yeah. and you can tailor to what you want. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, uh, Johnny B cat. Uh, I, I don't know if I can tell you can tell, but I, I'm old. So like some of the pop culture references of <laughs> like newer years are a little lost on me. I, I am stupid. And I keep asking like, what does that mean? But anyways, uh, so we have all of these settings here. And the thing that I like is right from the get go, we have uh, this. Uh, so by default, Fiddler is going to capture all of your HTTP traffic, right? But if you do trust a root certificate, then we can look inside your HTTPS traffic as well. So um, and, and Eve, correct me if I'm wrong, this is just a one time thing you have to do, right? Yes. Just like trust that root certificate. Yes. Yeah. And you check that box, and then we can start capturing HTTPS traffic. Um, the other thing I also do is, uh, oh, well, what is this one? Ignore server certificate errors. Uh, do you know what this it does? No, I haven't. I don't think I've used that in my particular yeah. instances. Uh, the tiger is saying I might be too young. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know where uh, the filler on the roof, uh, how, how old that is. No, it was probably from like the 60s or 70s. Oh, okay. Then I am too young. Yes. <laughs> yes. So he'll correct me, but I, I think I'm in, I'm in the decade ballpark. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, the other thing I do is in my uh, connections. Oh, uh, look at that. Uh, Bodhi is here. Oh, yay. Hold on. We will not uh, have uh, any unanswered questions now. <laughs> Hey, Robert, thanks for lurking. Thanks for being in the chat room. But this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert Bodyheimer, and he is the fiddler expert that you want to talk to. If the server has expired certs, you can say to ignore so you don't get DDoS. Yes. And it is um, it is funny how uh, some of the modern websites we see end up getting uh, expired certs and funny errors. Uh, but okay, so that's a way for ignoring that. Okay, now the other thing I like doing is if you wanted to like set the port if you want something different. Uh, but I, I always make sure to uh, check this box. So especially, and actually, I can show you this like towards the end. Like so, um, on my phone, uh, if my phone and my computer are on the same Wi-Fi, I can actually see traffic on my phone and not just on my mobile simulators. So uh, you want to enable that uh, checkbox because then your phone's traffic also goes through your computer and, and through Fiddler. So that, that's a port and you just need to know the IP and that's it. So you can capture live traffic on your, on your device as well. Uh, there are like privacy and other types of settings, which I normally don't mess with, uh, uh, rules, which we'll get into. Uh, so yeah, I think that's just my default settings. But again, make sure you trust that root certificate. Make sure you allow remote connections, and that's it. 
So um, once I'm here, you can see all of my sessions and I haven't saved anything yet. These are my overviews for each session and my inspectors and my rules. Uh, my uh, settings live here. So once I start capturing, you can see my um, all of the traffic out of my computer uh, start doing stuff. So here, if I can go to, you know, let's do Microsoft. Right. So that is a GET request going out, and oh, too much, too much. Okay, stop. All uh, right. So where did that go? Uh, probably this one here. Uh, no, that, was, that looks like a post. Uh, but again, the moment I turn it on, you can see how many it goes. Uh, probably this one here. So you can see, like, for each uh, session, for each request, you can kind of drill down to see what were the headers, what was the request uh, and the response body. You can go into an inspector mode where you see uh, literally everything. So um, your your headers, uh, your, any parameters you're passing in, any cookies, um, and then the response. Uh, so this one here is showing me like an XML response, which is essentially uh, HTML, uh, but that's it. So every request and response, you can get that. And here's the part I actually did not know. Uh, so you can right click on each request and response and do more things. Like you can replay that without actually going to your browser. Um, you can copy things out of it. You can export and you can share. Uh, you can share a selected session. So, um, Eve, question for you. So, like, like this section section here where you have your save requests, is that where your like saved things go? So, yeah. What you could do if if you decide you want to like share a collection, you can you could select all of a particular one or just one one and send it right through the UI to another teammate. So, I let's see. say you needed to reproduce an issue. You're on the support team, but mm -hmm. you can hand it off to your development team for the fix. You could share those sessions within the UI, enter an email, enter a small message with context, and then nice. they'll open up Filter Everywhere in the top right corner by that notification. They mm -hmm. can click on it and see all those sessions that you shared with them. I see. OK, OK. And what I also learned the other day is I can edit each of the recorded responses right here in the, from the Edit the Composer. So I don't need to kind of do this whole thing by, by myself, by hand. I can just like start from the request and just start like mucking with it and then changing things, which I like. OK, so uh, from this like live traffic recording, uh, Eve, am I missing anything uh, to say? Like, I can filter things, right? You can filter things. That's one thing I like to do right off the bat is I'll go to the filter and look for like 400 and 500 requests. I see. It's always a good thing to do as you're, you know, capture your traffic. Let's get that particular yeah. task out of the way. Um, right. And you do that, you know, very quickly. and. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, like all of these like 200 and 300 things are just going to fill up your timeline very quickly because right. uh, it's, it's just a lot of request responses. You know, or you can I'm use just... that search if you're looking for a particular CSS file, oh, something like that. You can use that search bar there if you really narrow down or if you even know the file name. You I know, see. let's say you okay. are the front end dev and you know the name of the file because you named it. You don't have yeah. to search for it. Just put it in the search button or, you know, in the search box and there you go. I see. Uh, so the chat room is asking questions and, and, and Robert is answering. So Johnny Cat was uh, B Cat was answering when rerunning, where will the results be present? They will show up at the list at the bottom. So yes, thank you. All right. Um, yeah, just so many request responses that go on like with Microsoft and Apple services. I'm just amazed. Uh, okay. So one thing I want to uh, check here, and bear with me, folks. Like I, I am um, getting back into the groove of Fiddler after a while. So uh, Eve is just uh, teaching me things here. So um, I, I do want to bring up a mobile simulator and see if I can. I, do I need to do anything to change or capture traffic? I, I don't think I need to, but let, let's try. So um, I do uh, Android and iOS, uh, but here's my um, iOS simulator. This is iPhone 12. We'll give it a second to load up. But it, it should not mean anything because it's like it's using the computer's uh, network, so which should by default go through uh, the Fiddler proxy here. OK, let's see. Is my, oh, my iPhone simulator hasn't had coffee, so it's taking a while to come up. And uh, while it's coming up, uh, Eve, what are these things here? Requests, like what can I add here? Oh, these are actually requests you can save. So I use this a lot of times when I need to simulate something. So uh, maybe I would have a JavaScript file 
that mm -hmm. I need to use, I can put that in here uh, and have that be returned instead of you know hitting the server and coming back. Okay, okay. But I mean, it looks like it opens up another one of the comp composer windows, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, the composer tab, that's something new. Yes, so let's in talk the, about the, that. In the 2.0 release. So let's go to the composer tab. So this is where I can make any request. Uh, and I like the fact that it's just a drop down here. Get, put, post, delete, head, trace, search, prop, find. I don't even know what prop find is. But again, all of the HTTP verbs there right here. Here's your URL. And I also like uh, this here. Oh, we have HTTP2 support now. That's good. Sorry, uh, Eve, you are going to say something. Um, no, the HTTP2 support, it is kind of in the beta testing. It's not officially rolled out okay. yet, but very soon. OK. OK, so uh, let, let's go back to live traffic. I want to get back to the simulator, and then I want to tinker more with the composer here. OK, so the simulator is up, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this back on, uh, go here, and go to my browser. And oh, it's loading up today.com. It should be fine here. OK, and that's it. Stop, stop, stop. All right. So let's go see which one was it. Probably this one here, 200 Connect. Uh, so uh, for each request and response, um, hold on. My Windows computer is trying to restart in the middle of a stream, which is not good. Uh, OK, so now um, headers. Uh, so WebKit, right? So that right there is my um, iOS um, uh, browser. Uh, keep alive, uh, connection close. So this may not have been the request that actually got us the HTML back. Yeah, that's just zero bytes. Uh, where is all this stuff? That's Chrome. That's uh, maybe this one? No, that's an Apple request. So maybe I missed it. Uh, hang on. This one did load up. Like, that's the web page I want. Can I scroll? Yeah. But uh, maybe I stopped it a little too soon because it was just in the middle of loading when I stopped it. Yeah, so I missed it. But you, you can see, like, I mean, just from, um, just from this request itself, like, this is coming from my phone. Right? This was the app kit thing, which we just saw overview. Uh, 200 connection, let's see, inspectors, headers, app kit, uh, no parameters in here. Yeah, this one's just a, looks like a keep alive uh, ping. So it actually wasn't the request and response that got us the page, but uh, like I, I don't have to do anything else, right? So to see my traffic, let's do one more. Um, send me a site to go to. You've I like hash node. I use that a lot of times for my node. testing. What does that do? Um, it's like an author site. All right. Okay, let's go there. Oh, no. What happened to you? Is it the... H-A-S-H-N-O-D-E? Is that what you had? Yeah, that's what I had. Oh, sure. Go for it. Where is it? It's uh, it's giving you the warning that hey, I'm going through a proxy. Okay, so that's Apple. Okay. But now it's going to be hard to see because like Apple does other uh, so many requests, anyways. So oh, so many post requests because we went to Apple. So that's from Chrome. Uh, these are the WebKit requests. So there, there, stop, stop. There we go. That one is like the eight thousand, uh, two thousand. Uh, 8,202 something bytes of data. That is what it needed to load up uh, apple.com. So that's the refer, that's Mozilla iPhone. So that right there is telling you the user agent of where it's coming from, uh, what which browser uh, requested that. And let's see, um, a lot of headers here. Uh, and then I, I don't think we can make sense of the body. Let's see, so that's just a lot of HTML, a ton of HTML. Like you said, Sam, you can check to see kind of like the sizing, you know, and some yeah. of these other timing statistics. So if you're having a concern with performance, this is a great place to start and figure out like yeah. what, you know, where what's causing that bottleneck. Yeah. Because you can see those things pretty quickly without having to hunt through all the data. Yeah. And, and this was like a huge uh, response back. 
So I'm guessing that was the main response to get us to apple.com. Okay, so um, just like um, case in point, like I didn't have to do anything to get my simulator traffic to show up on, uh, on Fiddler, which is good. Okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, some other things. Let's, let's talk about the composer that you just did. Uh, but uh, I want to show you um, something that I like uh, to use like when I'm testing things. Uh, it's a little thing called the JSON placeholder. They just give you like a nice little API to play around with. Uh, nothing, nothing fancy, but it's all JSON that comes back. And they give you some nice like restful endpoints. Uh, and they do actually have some like objects you can uh, target. Like this one is like about a blog post. So like posts, comments, albums. So if I go to posts here, it gives you back things in Latin, and, and Chrome likes to translate those. But again, if you just want like to play around with some APIs, I, I like these folks. It's just, it's just called JSON placeholder. Um, so when I'm going to these, um, I can capture that whole thing, and I can bring it and do it right here as well, right? So let's just do an execute. So OK, so this is the um, get where I uh, get back exactly the response that I got from my browser. And I can change my user agent. Uh, I can provide any parameters if you want. Oh, and actually, let's do this. If I do one, I think it just gives you one one thing back. Oh, there you go. Right. So if if I do a one, let's see, um, uh, Eve is my, can you read my text or should I make things any bigger? Um, a little bigger might, wouldn't hurt. Okay. 120 person. Okay, there you go. So if I do like a one, then I only get like one object back. So you can see like I can change this to, you know, like what, uh, uh, let's do you know, five. Then you, I get a different object back, right? So it's just user ID, title body. That's what I'm getting back. And it's just pure JSON. So if I look at the body, uh, let's see, there is nothing here in, except for just the user agent, the host. The content type is automatically set to app forward slash JSON because it, it is it knows to give me back JSON. So I didn't have to set that. So I can I can do that. Um, and it's key value pair. So this is uh, this is all good. But then uh, let's let's also um, talk about rules because I know it can actually do the the capture uh, of the request and then playing it back. So let's uh, let's do this. If I enable this and let's do this on my browser. And then enable enable the rules as well, Sam. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here, here's me getting that same thing back. Uh, but let's look at that request going out. Uh, that's this one here. Yes, that's the one which has. Wait a second. Uh, which one was it? That's five. Yes, that's the five. So now if I go to rules, um, and, and is are the rules thing like per request, or can you set up rules for like everything? You can set up rules for multiple requests. And one thing I want to make a distinction, some people might not be familiar with this rules tab. This came out with 2.0. So this is um, the next version of autoresponder. Okay. So a lot of people are familiar with autoresponder and that allowed you um, to work with just live traffic. What rules does, it allows you to work with live traffic and previously captured sessions. So it's been further enhanced. Okay. So if you're looking okay. for the autoresponder tab in 2.0 and you're not seeing it, rules is where you want to go. It has all the functionality plus additional. Yeah. Um, okay, Johnny Bcat, um, you're not going to see us uh, bad mouth competition, um, but you're talking about Postman, and yes, Postman does do some of these API things, but you're not comparing apples to apples here. Um, uh, Postman is just for APIs, while this is kind of more of a network proxy. It is for team collaboration. It is for sharing. It is for capturing your mobile traffic. Um, and um, auto responding things back um, and and the logging everything else so that's all i'll say so uh, but this this part that we're doing is just very basic so yes go on eve now to say well said you know i like to explain to people that you know there are alternative tools out there but you're not yeah. gonna find anything that beats the full visibility that filter right. offers yeah because it, it's a proxy it's not everything right. is going through that okay so let me let me tinker here um, so if I add a new rule, uh, what am I seeing here? Oh, this is the rule builder, OK? OK, um, yep. So go to the session where you want to add the rule. Yeah, so I, I selected that. So let, let's just, like, instead of giving me back uh, the, the thing that the website did, well, like, what if you were trying to test out your APIs without going off the internet, or maybe your middle tier team is doing something else? So uh, I just want to change, like, what the service gives me back. 
So let me, let me try this. Uh, this is what I'm used to doing. Uh, so let's just do dummy uh, JSON back, right? So um, when, okay, so I get, I get it. So there's a condition and then there's a when, okay? So let's change this to like the placeholder uh, posts five. And when this comes up, oh, I see. So update request header, uh, oh, predefined response. Okay, so this is like the different HTTP things. Okay, I see. Yeah. So I can respond with all of these things, HTTP codes, I see. Okay, but. Yes, or you can um, even put like a manual response. Yeah, where's that? Can, oh, it's right uh, there. Yes. <laughs> if I can And then read. you can paste in what, what you'd like. Yeah, oh, I, I do that sometimes with like 500s if I want a custom 500. Sure, okay. Uh, and that's it, right? So if yep. I do save. And then and... there's that toggle at the top of the rules tab that will need to be. Oh, you know, I see. Yep. Okay. Small, so, but yep, makes a difference. Yeah, so if I execute this, it's going to do it on all recorded sessions? No, because just on the highlighted ones. Oh, I see, I see. Yep. But like, if I go to live capture now, uh, if, if I redo this now, oh, there you go, there you go. So uh, I don't yep. know if you can see it. It's, it's too small here. If I bump it up, like now I'm getting hello world, right? So we did not even go to their site because we just uh, replaced it. We, we said just do our thing. Um, oh, uh, chat room is busy here. Fiddler was first eight years. Yep, I like the UI on this. Uh, thank you, Johnny Bicat. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so, what else am I missing with with rules? I mean, there's just it depends all the rules that you want to put on there. You know, like we talked about, we can um, add rules. We can delay requests. So, oh. we can put one where you can like simulate a server, a slow server. Right or a, uh, like a server delay or a server drop, you can I simulate see. all these things and see what it's going to look like and make sure that you're happy with that experience. Or you oh. can simulate CSS files getting delayed and before pushing your app live, be like, "Oh, wait, that doesn't look good. That's not the impression I want to leave my users with." Or let's say I didn't minify my um, CSS elements and they're oversized and the page scrolling is awful. These are all things that you can test beforehand so there's no surprises on your live site. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I, I like the graceful close and the delay because, again, like how many times are we building apps where people are carrying the apps on, or on their phones and you don't know what the experience will like be like if you are missing CSS or JavaScript files. So this is a way of kind, kind of delaying things and see what the experience is like. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you can show me some of this stuff. Uh, so uh, I'm not just tinkering around. Uh, I know you you are kind of uh, in, into this day in and day out. Um, but let, let me go through the basics and then uh, I can hand it over to you. You're doing a great job. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, oh, let's do, uh, let's do Fiddler Jam uh, real quick. Uh, but I mean, this is, uh, let's, let's go back to the docs because I, I saw all of those things. So we did the, installation, we did the configuration. That's how do we trust uh, the root certificate. Now we see HTTPS, uh, capturing traffic. Uh, that's all the live traffic recording, inspecting it. We selected each request and then we see all the details uh, and we can replay it, modifying it. So I can I can take any request. I can, uh, this is where I learned, like I can edit the request and I can change things. So I don't need to create the request uh, from scratch. Uh, mock server response. This is where you can create a rule, and then uh, this is what we did with like the hello world. So every time you hit that URL with that condition, you're going to get that mock response back. Um, API request. That's just the composer, right? Uh, pretty much user agent host. Yeah. Um, organized requests. Uh, oh, this is the section here on the left, uh, Eve. So you can um, you can create these requests as like a batch or a collection, and then you can share, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, I see. Like if you are dealing with like auth tokens and stuff like that, you just create like a whole uh, collection, and then you have that shared collection that other people can come in. Uh, collaboration, uh, save and share sessions. Okay. So yeah, we talked a little bit about this. How you know you could, that would be that handoff to the dev team, you're reproducing an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to give them the full context, you can send all of those files and log them directly. Okay, so uh, the context menu allows you to export the capture traffic in known formats. What, what are these formats? Uh, oh, HTTP archive, is that, that's like HAR, right? I think. Yes, HAR files and um, yes. SAS. 
What what says? Um, that's a Telerik Fiddler specific okay. file type. Okay. Uh, so you save all of these, and are they saved like locally, or just like you create an email that you want to share this with somebody? Yeah, they'll be all. If we go back to the Fiddler UI in that um, top left hand corner, you see my sessions. So you'll okay. be able to kind of group all of your sessions and have different file names. So like a hierarchy there. Okay. And then if vice versa, if someone shares with you, they would be in that next folder. And I see. you have those until you decide, you know, no, no longer need them. Okay. Right? If okay. you've dealt with something, you can move on, you know, kind of clean it out of your system. Otherwise you have um, those files in there. Okay. Okay. So let's turn this off and, and show me, um, uh, show me, uh, well, actually, we still have that rule. And let me turn that rule off because it's going to, now I should be able to get back to my regular responses, right? Yes. Okay. So if I were to use Fiddler Jam, so this is one extension that I have installed, right? This is on Chrome. And does it work on uh, Edge? Um, not officially. Okay. <laughs> All right. is, is my short answer. All right. So on Chrome, I have um, I have this installed, and um, this is the thing that I like that it gives me the control uh, in my advanced options on uh, like before I capture. First up, it's only doing it on that one tab, and so let's let's zoom in on this. Let's see, can you see the zooming? Uh, yes, chat, looks good. chat room. Okay, so walk me through exactly what uh, what these things are. So I can have the user take screenshots. This is probably too much of a zoom. Can I scroll over a little bit on this side? Hang on. Too much zoom. There you go. OK, so I can take screenshots while I'm capturing. I can capture console, um, mask cookies. The mask console would be the logs. OK, and disable cache. OK, yep. so uh, I can turn these things on and off as a user if I'm concerned about privacy, correct? Exactly. Exactly. All right, so let's say. I, I, I am okay with it, and then I say start capture. So it has it has started, right? And it will start, and it will only do one one browser session. So you know, one tab. Okay. So keep that and in mind then, if, if you need to switch context. Yeah, that it's yeah. for privacy reasons. I sure, so. sure. I see the red thing blinking here, which probably tells it that hey, I'm I'm capturing. Okay, so stop. All right, so now I have captured it. Now what do I get? I get a link, and uh, so what happens if I just click on the link? Sure. It's uploading, okay. So just for some clarity, so in this scenario, you would be the end user. You right. would have been someone who reached out to a support team saying, I am experiencing this particular bug. They sent you a link to this Chrome extension. You went to the Chrome store, you mm -hmm. added it to Chrome, and you're following the steps they told you. Capture it and send it to us. Um, and then you will get that link. And what you can do is send that to them via email, via chat, you know, whatever that support channel is. If right. you're an internal client or, you know, a support agent, let's say we're working within progress, um, you know, you may have access to a portal and you can share it directly that way. Sure. So sure. it really depends on your scenario and circumstances, but it yeah. is as simple as that. Simple as okay. link. So I have a link here. That's the one that I copied out. So if I open that up, um okay so i'm not sure if you've are you, if you're set up with the portal yeah, maybe not so this would but... be the next step um and the portal is where your support team would go and review these logs and be able to see all the information oh no so i, I was using a trial so that probably no just problem. expired um can i was... can i can i copy that uh, url and open it up in fiddler because i think that's one thing you can so do, right? You can integrate Fiddler Jam Portal with Fiddler Everywhere, but yeah. that particular URL that you have is meant for the Fiddler Jam Portal. I see. Okay. So if I were able to open that, then I can. Uh, I've seen that link where uh, I can just like open up that uh, link in Fiddler uh, Everywhere. So it just like takes me from the link directly to into Fiddler Jam, or in, into like the Fiddler Jam sessions in my Fiddler Everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. See, I'm internal, but uh, I have my subscription expired. So uh, we'll that fix is. That for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so that's Fiddler Jam. Um, but there's one more thing here, and, and um, I'm going to let uh, Eve drive here and, and show us the 
really good stuff. But this is what also uh, excites me that I can capture uh, mobile traffic. So there are two things we need to do. Um, and let's see what uh, we said we'll go an hour. So we have 15 minutes left. I can show you this, but I'm also curious with uh, some of the demos that uh, you do, uh, Eve. But uh, this is what I do. So uh, first up in your connections, you need to allow um, the remote connections thing. Uh, so here, make sure you have that checkbox on. Okay, that's that's what's telling it. So then, beyond that, uh, you what you have to do is on your uh, on your iOS or Android device. You that's too big. So you go into the Wi-Fi that you're connected on. Right now, my computer is hardwired, but you um, make sure your computer and your phone are on the same Wi-Fi. You go into the um, uh, proxy settings of your Wi-Fi. You manually configure it to point it to whatever is your IP, which is your 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 host machine, right? And then your uh, that's your server. And the, for the port, by default, if you changed it, that's fine. But it's looking for uh, that port uh, that Fiddler is looking at, right? So connections, this port, right? So if you've changed it, uh, then go ahead and, and change that. So with just that server and the port changed, then you can just uh, keep using your phone on on that Wi-Fi. But then everything is routed through Fiddler. And then uh, you just need to um, uh, kind of capture live traffic. And then um, all of your traffic from your mobile device just shows up right here on Fiddler, uh, which which I really like. Um, but like I said, I mean, I can show you that. But I mean, it's right there on the docs as well. And you can also do like HTTPS traffic inspection through that. You just need to go and it, uh, kind of install and um, accept that root certificate from Fiddler on your mobile device as well. Um, but again, this is all in the docs, so I don't want to um, uh, waste your time trying to do that. But um, Eve, do you want to show me some stuff? Because like the CSS and the delay stuff, that looked really cool. But yeah. I, I know I know you do other demos as well. I can show a couple things here. All right. So let me uh, move my window back. And the, whoa, you don't want to see that. There you go. So. Um, Let's have you share your desktop whenever you're ready. Okay. There you go. Okay, can you see my, my fiddler? Yes. Open up. Okay. Yes. And go ahead and uh, hit that little hide button by the OCD in me. It just wants Got to it. take no, that on it. other people's desktop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you're now you're looking at the pro doing fiddler, not yes. me. <laughs> so um the hash node website. Can you see okay. that as well too? Yes. yes. So this is a site that I like to use as I kind of walk through different scenarios of how you can use Fiddler. And I talked a little bit about this on the session that I did a couple weeks ago. Like, you know, inspecting your network traffic is great, but there's so much more that you can learn from it and that you can do. And like we talked about, you know, manipulation um, as well as mocking and all of those things. Let me open up Fiddler here. Now let me go back. Hold on a second. I, I have not uh, used Hashnode before. Uh, I'm new to this. I go to my right story. And let's see. Let me remove all. Let me go back to there. So, is this a site that you use to kind of? write blog posts or i don't you know in particular it just seems to be a good site as i come through things um okay. to use for fiddler so i'm trying to look for my story idea here here it is so here's like my okay. create story request so i like using mm -hmm. this one so this was that right button that i had just clicked and okay. what i can do is i like i typically go in this way i do a right click you know and i add a rule oh and i see i need to disable i had a I have a couple of different rules open. You see, I've been playing around a lot in here. So mm -hmm. you can keep your rules and then just disable them so you don't have to write them from scratch every time. But just remember to do that. And then I will go here and say in this particular one, I want to do a predefined response and I want to do a 401, mm -hmm. the auth basic. Okay. okay. And then I hit save. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yep. Like, if, if you have a rule and when you hit that execute button, like, are you actually applying the rule to all the requests and responses no. that are tracked? No. Okay. Nope. Only the selected one. Yes. Okay. And then I go back to my hash node website. Uh, fresh. This 
see? And then I hit, I so I did a hard refresh there. Uh -huh. And then I went to my right again. But now since I sent that rule, I'm getting where it's asking me for credentials. Okay. So I can, a scenario for this would be, I want to make sure that this behaves as I intended it to, you know, when right. I wrote the code. Um, right. So I'm simulating that 401 and it's acting, you know, as I expected. Yeah. It's prompting so you, for those credentials. You, you're triggering the odd thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Perfect. Kind of think what you did here as well. You can do in here. Um, wrong. Name that rule. Mm -hmm. Then I can save it and disable it. You know, and you can also modify existing rules. You know, let's say I had this rule, and it's similar to one. This is one where I had replaced it with a JavaScript file. But you can go through and edit those rules. Um, and name them. And like I said, it's just the toggle on and off. And and, and the rules are, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, the, the rules are sticky, right? So they, they stay with Fiddler. And then when you close and you come back, you see the rules? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Some of these rules, I mean, like that fail hash node save, I think I've had it for a couple weeks. Okay. Um, but right. I was so proud of myself when I did it. I don't want to delete it, even though I probably don't. <laughs> I don't need it right now, but right. that's my right. only I mean, thing where I'm holding yeah. onto it. Sure. Right. So it's, it's you. You can turn it off and just keep on uh, yep. holding on to it if you want. Okay. Um, so that's you know triggering auth, uh, and you. I saw that you can also trigger like a variety of HTTP codes, like uh, if you want to just respond, um, and and you know like any four hundred codes other than four hundred four. Yes. So you can see here all the different ones that you can do. Um, I've really gotten into doing a lot of the manual responses, you know, so one that I like is the delay request, Yeah. right? So I can decide now this is in milliseconds. So let's say I want to delay, um, it by 5,000, which is that's mm -hmm. five seconds. So, right. uh, Eve, before you fire that off, just yep. real quick, uh, I'm realizing like we have been talking, but uh, folks are joining us maybe on and off. So, uh, David Gaming 1620, what is Fiddler? Well, that's what we're talking about. Um, do a search on Fiddler on your search engines, and you can uh, end up landing on a hub page that tells you all about Fiddler. Fiddler, it is a network proxy, so it tells you everything that's going on in your network stack, so you're never in doubt uh, for your browser apps, for your uh, mobile apps and be able to uh, capture requests because um, everything goes through the proxy and be able to play it back and be able to tinker with the request and responses as uh, as Eve is doing now. So it is the tool. Uh, it is actually not one tool. It's like a family of tools uh, with Fiddler. You can use it on Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as have browser extensions so your users can capture traffic as well. So that's it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, so what did you do? You had the delay. Yeah, so what am I gonna do here? Let me go back and do this. I had to I forgot I didn't disable the other one. Now did you do delay on a single file or the whole request itself? So I did a delay on the create story. Okay. So I'll go back through here. So I did the delay and I did delay requests in the five thousand. Like I said, it's in milliseconds. Hit so that's save. not too much. Yeah, it's like no. five seconds. Yeah. Um then I'll go to here. And you can see it's waiting one, two, uh -huh. three, four, you know, five. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. I found it right on time. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> it is actually appreciable delay here, yeah, five <laughs> seconds. Okay. Now, can you can you do this where like not on the whole request, but let's say your your response to the request includes a bunch of CSS files or JavaScript. Like what does the response look like to a user who doesn't get the CSS file? Like can you delay like a single file? I haven't done the. I've done a delay with like the images. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I've done but the, the if, scenario if that you you're back, referring to. If you go back to the uh, to the rules, I think I saw a UI that would let you do that because on 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 the when, uh, if you know the file name, like right there, uh, instead of a response. URL, response file. Okay. Well, on the left. Oh yeah, side, so this would be the like when, the one I have with the JavaScript. I see. So on, on the left here, what 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 options do you get? Um, like you have the URL, but could you also choose like a file? Yeah, yes, I, yeah, yeah show so us like, that. I show you this one. So what I did here, this was on a hash note site. I took um, one of their URLs. It's a very long 
JavaScript URL here, you can see. Yeah. And then what I did is when that was fired, I had it trigger this particular file that I had on my system. So I think that's I what see. you're referring to, right? The response file. Yeah. So what, instead what of having is, to go through the server, uh -huh. I was able to do this, you know, within Fiddler. I didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On your on your left hand side, when you have the conditions, what's the drop down other than URL? What else can you do? Oh, there you go. Uh, Protocol, host, to... path, URL which I'm on, status, method, process, and client IP. Okay, so I think you most for the most. Part you want to choose URL, and then you if you know the file name, then uh, and and then uh, Bodhi was commenting commenting here that I can use CSS delays to see the impact or whether or not I want inline CSS or not. So uh, you you might need to kind of know the file name, I suppose, to do this because then you're yes. you're choosing that file to be delayed, right, right. Or, or not be delivered. Yeah, this isn't okay. a file that I found, you know, within um, the live traffic tab. Yeah. You know, as the developer, I, I knew the file that I wanted sure. okay. um, and put that in here. Okay. And then I had so it return what, what, this response, a different I file. See. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, if, if you did that, like if you knew that that CSS was also part of what your response is, then you can also like delay that file being delivered and see what that experience looks like, like yes. as your page is loading up, what is the experience without the CSS? Correct. You know, yeah. should there be some type of loading indicator? Right. right. That's something that comes up to get, let the user know what's going on in the background, what to expect. Um, sometimes when you have those error messages, you know, how does it look? Does it leave them a clear path of where to navigate to, or does it yeah. lack empathy? There's so many things that you can determine by running these particular um, scenarios to see what that user experience is going to be like and, and make oh. those changes before yeah. you know someone presents you with I'm stuck I don't know where to go yeah. you know a lot of this <laughs> can be work, work, works on my machine only right of course we've all heard that. Else. yes yeah okay so since I wasn't set up with Fiddler Jam could you show me like are you uh, can you do you have the extension in your on your browser I do have the extension I do not have the portal loaded up for us okay apologies for that no worries then okay um, what, what else can you show us here on Fiddler? What are some of your favorite um, things to show? I'm to show you here the new um, Fiddler GM. Let's see here. This is something that just happened on Thursday. So this is the hmm. new Fiddler Jam web page that we hot just bits. launched. Um, so yes, hot off the press. And it does come with a 14-day trial. So you can mm -hmm. use all of, um, of all of the goodness that it offers. And we've done a good job in this one. And this shows you some, shows you some screenshots to really differentiating between the extension that we right. talked about and everything that it can do, um, as well as the portal. And this is a part, unfortunately, I don't have access to. But you can see the screenshot here, Sam. Yeah. Um, so I would show you these particular requests with the headers, the forms, the cookies. Uh, there's a little toggle here, too. Where else is it? Um, oh, so this, this, this por portal is new. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's why I wasn't set up. I mean, it's okay. newer, but yeah, this newer. is yes. But this okay. is where the kind of that true power of the tool lies. The yeah, because you're, yeah. you're seeing the differentiation between like what the user would do and then what you do with that link in that portal and then bringing it back into Fiddler. Correct. Oh, and uh, Robert, thank you for that. So Robert is commenting that uh, you know we, we talked about like API manipulation tools, and yes, there are, and, and actually Dev tools in Chrome is not bad at all, um, but um, uh, these are the things that are kind of really difficult to simulate, uh, where you are delaying things, where you are dropping files from a response, and seeing what the experience is like. Um, so yeah, thank you for that, Robert. Yeah, and this just shows um, that handoff and kind yeah, of a narrative form. So, you know, if you still have questions and it's just not quite clicking of you know, how could I make this work, I think this page um, does a great job of explaining that and really narrowing in um, on the problem yeah. that solves depending on who you are. If you're the end user, the support team, the developer team, you know, there's a, a narrative unique to you. Right. No, I like I like that 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 breakdown. You use end user, support team, dev team, and then what yep. each one of them gets to look at. 
Uh, okay, here maybe here's maybe a trick question. So, if uh, can Fiddler Jam do HTTPS traffic? I mean, it is it is a browser extension. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, you know, it's all within the browser, so I don't see why it would. Okay. Um, not. Okay. All right. And I, I think I saw like HTTPS in one of the yeah. screenshots that you had as well. Okay. All right. Um, so we are we are already at an hour. I know we could have kept going. You're right. At first, you never an hour seems like a long time, yeah. but start talking and time okay, gets away so from you. Here's the question, and uh, I, I know um, Robert and a lot of other folks are um, uh, still on the boat of using Fiddler Classic. But is there feature parity right now, or are there some things that uh, only work in Fiddler Classic? Um, they, they are two distinct products. You know, they yeah. have a lot of the same core functionality, um, but for example, um, like HTTP2 support, the themes, um, the new rules, all of those things are uh, specific to Fiddler Everywhere. Okay, I see. So, so like you, know, you again, said- Fiddler like... Classic isn't going anywhere. You know, that's right, right. always a no, question that, that comes up. To, like, good to say. Um, yeah. You know, that, that is a product um, that remains for the users of it who appreciate yeah. it, but Fiddler Everywhere is, um, the product that you're going to see a lot of the new um, features come out of. Right, right. So is is Fiddler going to keep calling it autoresponder and Fiddler rework all set rules? I'd have to find out on that. I mean, this is pretty new. I mean, it's so hard for me not to say autoresponder. I mean, we that's yeah. very. It's always been a very powerful feature, Fiddler everywhere. So even for me to, to you know talk to it as the rules tab, it's taken a little bit. Um, yeah. So I'll have to get back to you on that one. I know how all to reach right. you. And the rest I can post it on here later. Okay, so let me um, let me kind of go back to where we had uh, started, right? So uh, this, folks, if I can drop a comment in here. Um, so this is the this is the hub page. This is where um, uh, you want to start uh, if you want to kind of tinker with Fiddler. Some of you were coming in uh, um, like midstream. That that is what we are talking about. Um, oh, uh, Full Schnabel is here. Hello, hello, good to see you. Um, autoresponder rules. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but uh, I think you could do rules. Uh, kind of the same concept for autoresponder. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, please clarify. They were just Fulchnabel. showing the fact that autoresponder had evolved, you know, yeah. because before it was only the live, live traffic. Um, so I think that's really the distinction that I should share, you know, is that you can now go to previously captured sessions, not just live. So that will probably also be the distinction between classic and everywhere. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> Food summer things are calling it rules. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Names, what's what's in a name? Yeah, but you, you get the idea. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, so again, coming from like my background, which is a lot of like client apps, um, I, I like the fact that when you go down to a proxy, it is really capturing everything. So when I'm building an app, I can see the backend APIs that I'm hitting. I can see traffic from my mobile browser, both in my simulator. And I love that. I mean, I can just like do stuff on my phone and then the traffic is, is right there on, um, on on Fiddler, uh, yeah, it, it is it is Twitch. Of course, we're trolling, we're trolling each other. <laughs> yes. Uh, so um, you're obviously excited, uh, Eve, with uh, with the direction of Fiddler, and we will have Robert uh, come and join me in two weeks, and he can sh you know, teach me some of the advanced topics. I've actually seen him do like one hour, two hour talks, and yes. they're incredible on Amazing. some of the power of uh, where it, it, this really kind of hits home for the dev teams and, and kind of catering to that user experience. That's so nice. Uh, but you had mentioned uh, roadmap. Is, is that public? Um, yes, what, it is on the that? product okay. pages um, from the top navigation menu. It talks about the roadmap and the things coming in this next release and probably one thereafter. Um, okay. You know, and roadmaps okay. are continuously updated. Mm -hmm. um, and as we come to releases, we'll be adding new stuff and things will be moving from the roadmap, you know, into the production. Nice. Um, but yeah, there's, I mean, they're working on so many things. That's, that's what's really yeah. amazing. And that's yeah. one key differentiator too. I think that people forget that, you know, Fiddler is supported by a dedicated team of developers, mm -hmm. support engineers. I mean, this is what they do is Fiddler. Um, and right. I, I don't think there's another product 
that does the same thing that can say they have that type of world-class um, support behind them. Yeah, yeah well said. Um, and, and what's the release uh, cadence like for Fiddler? So the cadence is, I would say, at, we're on average, if I go by the, these next two or probably every four months, but that isn't to say that it's going to stay at that cadence. It may speed up. It just depends on those features. And we are still actively listening, you know, to the community and trying to build things in that, you know, we hear that people kind of on their, on their wish list. So yeah. that it's, we're very innovative. So okay. we're constantly yeah, learning, constantly evolving, try to keep on that release cadence for the users as right. close as we can. And I, th I think uh, it's good to mention that if you are using like other like Telerik or Kendi web products, like this is off uh, off the release schedule. Like so, all of the other dev developer tools have their schedule like R1, R2, and R3, like three major releases a year. But Fiddler releases are not like aligned with uh, the other dev tools releases, right? Correct. Because that that happens like sometimes and on its own schedule, like you said, yes. like three to four months. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes they end okay. up lining up. But yeah. other times, you know, we, they do not. Sure. Okay. I think uh, that's that's the show. We started with absolutely the basics. We uh, talked about uh, how the Fiddler, you know, the family has evolved. It's not just one Fiddler Classic on Windows, which you're, again, if you're using it, keep on using it. Uh, but uh, Fiddler Everywhere is really the one that, uh, for, that you want to use for Mac and, and Linux and as well as Windows. And it's seeing a lot of innovation with the rules engine. Um, with, uh, with the responders, autoresponder rules, however you want to yeah. call it. Uh, and uh, again, it's just the, the power of this is in the way you, <clears throat> excuse me, in the way you mock things, in the way you respond and you, uh, you tinker with the request and responses and how it kind of um, mocks the server response. So uh, yes, uh, Robert, I look forward absolutely. And I do owe you an apology because uh, Robert actually found out like from one of our social media posts that he was joining me before I could actually reach out to you and, and request you uh, to come and teach me. So thank you for being uh, so, uh, so available and flexible with your plans. Uh, so we shall see you in two weeks where um, Robert teaches me more about some of the advanced Fiddler techniques. But Eve, I know this was completely just me randomly asking you uh, to just hop in and show me stuff. So thank you for teaching me. No problem. Thank you uh, for kind of going over all of the um, different ways the Fiddler family has evolved. So um, a, a quick shout out to uh, our folks uh, in BG as well. That's where uh, Sofia Bulgaria is where the engineering team is. And they're just amazing. And that's also where our social uh, team is. And, and they're, uh, they stay up late with us uh, whenever we do stream. So a big thank you to you. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you're on the East Coast, it's almost lunchtime. So Eve, hopefully the day gets a little uh, brighter. It's not doom I'm hoping. And doom. It doesn't look, <laughs> I, I feel like my background has not changed. <laughs> since we started, but I mean, I still have half the day to go. So yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for having planning. me. Thanks everyone for tuning yeah. in. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, folks. Uh, so that's the show. Uh, thank you chat room for hanging out with us and we shall see you on the next stream. Until right. next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.